You're asking Americans to trust you with their future. Then there was this moment, which you heard about. Trump also spoke out about his ongoing feud with the Muslim family who took the stage at the DNC, talked about how their son gave his life for America while fighting in Iraq. Trump saying he has no regrets about questioning the cons and specifically wondering why the mother didn't speak. She later said she was too grief-stricken. Also adding to a recent bout of campaign controversy, the answer Donald Trump gave when asked how he would want his daughter Ivanka to handle sexual harassment. Quote, I would like to think she would find another career or find another company if that was the case. Joining me now on all of this, Glenn Beck, founder of The Blaze and author of the brand new book. Hold on, hold on, let me plug your book. <laughs> Liars, How Progressives yes. Exploit Our Fears for power and control. Hi, Glenn. Okay, so yeah. your thoughts on those five items that Mr. Trump has generated today? I, quite honestly, um, I, I think, if I may, take it another direction. I think that the media and America is so myopic looking at the, this cult of personality between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump that we're missing the real story. Um, and, and that is, and I urge people to look this guy up, it's the same kind of feeling and the same kind of research we did when we said there's a caliphate coming. Um, Russia is trying to destabilize our political system. Um, Dugin, who is a main advisor of Putin and a very dangerous man, thinks that Hitler just didn't go far enough. He's the guy who advised Putin to go into the Crimea. He is now giving speeches in Russia where he is saying we are um, infiltrated into the political system <clears throat> he is he is thinking that Donald Trump is the answer not for I don't think he actually cares And I don't think that either Hillary or Donald are involved in this in any way But what they're trying to do is seed revolution on the streets Those are their words and this is what we should be talking about this game is going to go on through November And, and I don't know how it ends um, but I do believe based on their words only that Russia is trying to take down Hillary Clinton try to um, uh, uh, destabilize our election and foment revolution on our streets. Mm -hmm. and I think uh, you, you, may, you may be honest something there because General John Allen told me last week when he was endorsing Hillary Clinton that in, in his experience the Russians study our elections yes. very closely and they Russia. study our candidates very closely, almost Russia. from an anthropological standpoint to understand their... Russia psyche. is trying... Russia is trying to do to us right now what we did to them under Ronald Reagan. Um, we have the same kind of things in play. We collapsed um, uh, the Soviet Union. Putin is going to pay us back, and that's exactly what he's trying to do right now. And the media and our politicians need to grow up and start talking about it. The one politician that should be on every channel tonight, and I'm not a fan of this man's policies, is Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney called this and everybody mocked him. Mm -hmm. We are about to find out that Russia is our biggest uh, our biggest foe and our biggest nightmare. Yeah, that was when President Obama said uh, that Russia called and they want to get their, uh, yep. their 1980s the foreign policy called. back, I think, something yeah. like that. Or let me yeah. ask you this, because there's other news to discuss tonight. <laughs> and specifically, I want to ask you about this. The latest poll show Hillary Clinton got a big bump out of her convention. Mm -hmm. uh, she's now beating Donald Trump in at least three polls. NBC has her with an eight-point lead. CBS has her with a seven-point lead. CNN has her with a nine-point lead over Trump. Now, back in May, you said, I'm telling you, Donald Trump is going to win this election. Given those polls, yeah. do you stand by that? I don't want to, I, I mean, I have no idea because I've been wrong every step of the way on this election. <laughs> I will tell you this, as I watched both the, uh, you know, in my book, Liars, I talk about what are the tools that progressives use to convince us of these lies. It was quite amazing. One of the first tools is fear. The GOP ran high on fear. But so did the uh, uh, so did the DNC. The DNC made it the fear of Donald Trump. But they did something that the Republicans didn't do. They told a very well crafted story all the way through that we're better than this. That uh, I mean, honestly, if I wasn't informed, if I was somebody who didn't know who Clinton was, I didn't recognize Marxist language. I would have watched that and thought, well, those are the people I want to be like. Those people I like. Those people if I didn't listen to their policies mm -hmm. and I was uninformed. They're using hope the way that Barack yeah. Obama used to hope to change. I'll, the thing that is yeah, going to go play a, a real factor here is yeah. Russia. What happens to Russia? All right, I got to ask you this, because you were a big supporter of Ted Cruz's, 
When I found out he was speaking at the Democratic National Convention, I gave him a hard time on the show. He wasn't here, but I, you know, behind his back. I know. I mean, he could see I it almost, because people watch. I, I, um, I almost Facebooked you because I was I angry at you. Well, you know, I, I was saying, isn't it hypocritical of these politicians to get up there after they say, I hate this person, and then speak on their behalf? And, you know, he and you sort of were saying, why don't you just hold on? Why don't you just why don't you hold your horses, ma'am? And yeah. then he got up at the Republican National Convention and shocked the world with this. Please, don't stay home in November. If you love our country and love your children as much as I know that you do, stand and speak and vote your conscience, vote for candidates up and down the ticket who you trust to defend our freedom and to be faithful to the Constitution. So I was wrong in the uh, prediction of how that was going to go, and I want to ask you what you thought of the moment, because of course he was excoriated by so many as committing yeah, I, political uh, suicide. Uh, I think if he, um, you know, if he had to do it all over again, and he asked my opinion, which he didn't, um, I would say you just don't, just don't show up, just, just go away for a while. Um, however, I think that it gave a lot of people courage. You know, Bernie Sanders did the exact opposite which is what all the people of the GOP said um, they wanted Ted Cruz to do. But as soon as Bernie did that, everybody on both sides of the aisle said, huge mistake for him, he sold out his values, his people no longer trust him. I think he's the only guy with any credibility who did the tough thing. When you saw that last 90 seconds of that speech, that was not easy Ted to Cruz. Not cave. Ted yeah. Cruz. When Ted Cruz. When Ted Cruz stood there, he stood there and he spoke his principles, and he spoke them with respect and decency, and he said, vote your conscience. Vote for the guy who's going to follow the Constitution. It's ironic that everybody in the crowd was booing him as if somehow or another they know that Donald Trump's not going to follow the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was they, foolishly played on the RNC side. They wanted the full-on, you know, vote for Donald Trump. Yep. Glenn, it's always a pleasure. Well, check out the book, Thank Liars. You. That's easy to remember. Liars. How progressives exploit our fears for power and control. Liars! He says, liars. It's great to see you, Glenn. All the best.